Hi there, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video I'm going to talk about the Snapdragon 835 uh, processor and my thoughts about it. Qualcomm had announced this uh, Snapdragon 835 uh, chipset which is going to be the flagship uh, uh, chipset from uh, Qualcomm this uh, year and many of the powerful smartphones will be using that. For example, the Samsung Galaxy S8 and many of the uh, leading uh, smartphone, high-end smartphones will be using the Snapdragon 835 and this is sort of the successor to the Snapdragon 835. 20 and the 821 which was uh, released last year and the first thing um, you will notice about the snapdragon 835 uh, chipset is that it's based on the 10 nanometer fabrication uh, which is a improvement from the 14 nanometer uh, which was used for the snapdragon 820 chipset in fact for the snapdragon 810 chipset uh, it was based on 20 nanometer and by shrinking uh, it the die size uh, the, and the transistor space between them is now just 10 nanometer that improves a lot of things and that's the reason Qualcomm is talking about uh, more efficiency according to Qualcomm very rough uh, estimates uh, they say that uh, this uh, Snapdragon uh, 835 when compared to the Snapdragon 820 is almost 25% uh, better in performance and they also say that it will be about 25 to 40% more efficient compared to the Snapdragon 820 chipset that means uh, you'll get better battery life and theoretically it should also heat up a lot less compared to the Snapdragon 820. Again, Snapdragon 820 didn't have a lot of heating issues but again if we compare it with the Snapdragon 810 uh, that had a lot of heating issues. But again, let's talk about the processor. This is regarding the size of the processor. As you can see, it's even uh, smaller than a dime and the processor nearby that one was the Snapdragon 820 chipset. So they have reduced the size uh, drastically and uh, this is made by actually Samsung uh, uh, Fabs uh, based on the 10 nanometer architecture and this is a general overview of the snapdragon 835 uh, chipset and the biggest uh, thing i would say for the snapdragon 835 is that now uh, qualcomm is using a new uh, uh, cryo core that is the cryo 280 and again it's very different from the earlier cryo cores that uh, uh, Qualcomm has uh, used. To give you an example again if we go back all the way to about Snapdragon 801, 805 Qualcomm always used their own custom cryo cores which was very different compared to the ARM one. It was a custom uh, core that they had used but for the Snapdragon 810 uh, chipset they actually used the ARM uh, own uh, cores. They didn't do a lot of modifications hence we got that uh, octa core and hex uh, 8, uh, 6 core processors Snapdragon 808 and 810 but again with the Snapdragon 820 and the 821 which was a big success uh, Qualcomm went back to their own cryo cores and you could uh, see the huge uh, improvements with the Snapdragon 820 and it was a quad core processor but now for this uh, Snapdragon 835 Qualcomm is going with a modified uh, cryo core and they're calling this the new cryo 280 and this is actually very different this is not a complete uh, new cryo core that they are using but it's uh, using the arms architecture and they're just slightly modifying it and this is very uh, different and Qualcomm has never done this you could call this sort of a hybrid uh, solution what they are doing and this uh, Snapdragon 835 uh, chipset now will be a uh, uh, octa core processor uh, based on the arm uh, what do you say big little architecture so the four cores will be clocked at higher frequency those will be the performance cores and other four cores uh, will be uh, clocked at a lower frequency so something very similar to what we have seen with the Snapdragon 810 chipset 820 was just a quad core but this is going to be a octa core processor uh, the low power cores uh, can be clocked up to 1.9 gigahertz and uh, the high performance score can go up to 2.4 gigahertz but in reality these are theoretical numbers that uh, uh, what do you say Qualcomm is pushing out but again I don't think so uh, we will see such high clock frequency for the high performance score it might be anywhere between uh, 2 gigahertz to 2.2 gigahertz and for the low power cores yeah, uh, it can go up to about 1.9 gigahertz but I think so the sweet spot might be between 1.6 to 1.8 gigahertz and according to even Qualcomm they say that the uh, low power Power cores are very important and they have improved efficiencies even on that because according to their estimate 80% of the time the processor uh, that is used is the low power cores in this uh, what do you say uh, a big little architecture so again uh, that is an improvement again moving to uh, another improvement that we have seen 
is the amount of cache that will be available to the processor is doubled. Uh, for the low uh, performance scores, it will be one uh, megabit uh, cache and for the high performance scores, it will be two uh, MB. And again, this is double compared to the earlier generations of the processor. So that should also improve the efficiency of the processor. Now moving to GPU, which is again an integral uh, part of the new Snapdragon 835 chipset will come with Adreno 540 GPU. And according to uh, Qualcomm, these are Qualcomm's estimate, they say that uh, it's about 25% faster in 3D operations and about 60 times more uh, color uh, rendition. Hence again, uh, these uh, chips will be HDR compatible and they'll support HDR 10. And also it uh, contains the updated 682 DSP. With the Snapdragon 820, uh, it was the 680 DSP. And the new DSP, according to Qualcomm, uh, they say that it'll help in VR. And now it can track uh, six axes of uh, movements, which will be great for VR and AR applications. And now moving to uh, the modem that they have used, uh, they are employing a new X16 LTE modem. Uh, and the, uh, this uh, LTE modem is uh, capable up to speeds up to one gigabyte bytes per second again obviously uh, um, none of the what do you say mobile networks as of now support those speeds but again uh, this x16 uh, uh, lt modem is capable of speeds up to one gigabit and uh, it's going to use four by four mimo implementation uh, and uh, now moving to another thing uh, that Qualcomm has uh, said is that this new Snapdragon 835 chipset will also improve uh, camera performance and camera sensors up to 32 megapixel are supported and uh, manufacturers can also use uh, dual camera setups up to 16 megapixel, 16 plus 16 that is 32. And also uh, Qualcomm has said that uh, this processor will, will help in autofocusing for example phase direct autofocusing, laser autofocus and even if uh, you are uh, a manufacturer uh, embeds two cameras for example the iPhone uh, 7 plus had that two camera setup or even the LG uh, G5 uh, had two camera setup one wide one small moving between them it will help in the transition and uh, focusing stuff so that's very interesting and focusing according to uh, Qualcomm should be way faster on this uh, Snapdragon 835 uh, chipsets this uh, new Snapdragon 835 chipset uh, will also be supporting Qualcomm quick charge Four, uh, again, uh, according to uh, Qualcomm, uh, this will result just five minutes of charging. Uh, you should get about five hours of operation. Again, I have already made a different video regarding the Qualcomm Quick Charge uh, 4. So if you're interested more in a, uh, that topic, you can check out that video. Link will be there in the YouTube show notes. So guys, that's it for now for this video regarding the Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 uh, chipset. And if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, hit that uh, subscribe button. Thanks for watching. This is Ranjit and I hope to see you in my next video.